Our next speaker is Jesslyn Reda, human rights attorney renowned for her work protecting whistleblowers and journalists while working at the Justice Department. And she disclosed the FBI committed ethics violations in their interrogation of John Walker Lynn. Among her many roles, Jesslyn is the Director of National Security and Human Rights at Expose Facts. I'm Jesslyn Radak, and um, I represent whistleblowers and sources for a living, basically. Um, I have defended the most number of media sources in the US who have been investigated and charged under the Espionage Act. Defendants can't get a fair trial under this law. In addition to the Espionage Act having no public interest defense, these cases are plagued by secrecy and defined by Kafkaesque features. For example, I have been shut out of my own clients' unclassified hearings. The parts of the hearings and trials that are public are often include code words and substitutions that make the proceedings very difficult for the public to understand. In one case, the government attempted to prevent defense attorneys from using the word whistleblower or the word newspaper. The government routinely also uses classification rules to withhold exculpatory evidence from defendants. In Chelsea Manning's case, the government withheld a damage assessment showing that her disclosures caused no real harm to national security. She was facing 35 years in prison. More recently, most recently, I represented and still represent Daniel Hale. <laughs> A huge shout out to Daniel. Um, I, I know he's paying attention to this. Um, but basically, Daniel had to navigate an Espionage Act prosecution in the most conservative federal court in the country, the exact same court where Assange is indicted in front of the same judge. Daniel is a veteran of the US Air Force who participated in the US drone assassination program. After leaving the Air Force, he became an outspoken opponent of the US's targeted killing program. He basically uh, called out and informed the public about targeting ineffectiveness and casualties and consistently exaggerating the accuracy of drone strikes and underreporting civilian deaths. Daniel's house was searched in 2014. Like Julian Assange, he lived under a sword of Damocles for a better part of his adult life. In May 2019, he was finally arrested and indicted on allegations that he disclosed classified documents to the US military's clandestine drone program, believed to have been the source material for a series in The Intercept called The Drone Papers. Daniel pleaded guilty to a single count under the Espionage Act and was sentenced to 45 months in prison. I think his case is a prescient warning of how an Espionage Act case against Assange would proceed. At sentencing, the judge recommended, he recognized that Daniel was a whistleblower and recommended that he be placed in a minimum security medical prison. But the Bureau of Prisons instead sent him to an Orwellian communications management unit nicknamed Gitmo North. 
There are only two such facilities in this country. Created in the aftermath of 9-11, they were intended to house terrorists. Daniel is a pacifist with no priors. Until recently, he has been housed in this special prison with the merchant of death, Victor Boot, who was recently released. So when the US gives assurances that Assange won't be put in a supermax, don't be fooled, because he'll end up in a far worse place, one of these communications management units. In the CMU, Daniel is far more isolated from his support network, unable to receive the medical and psychological care he so desperately needs, and has more restrictions on his communications, reading materials, and visitors with other people than anyone on death row. Earlier this year, Daniel applied to be transferred to the type of treatment program he was recommended for at sentencing. But in the case management unit where he's housed, the counterterrorism unit gets a veto over such therapeutic programs, and his application was denied. They still label him a threat, meaning even if Assange were to reach an acceptable plea agreement, Daniel's case proves that the US government can still use a prison system to retaliate the way that they are currently using process as punishment while Assange is in Belmarsh. Assange is under attack for publishing information in the public interest, which is threat enough to the First Amendment in and of itself. But from my extensive experience fighting the injustices in cases brought under the Espionage Act, it is abundantly clear that the Assange prosecution is also a threat to the most basic constitutional principles of fairness and due process. These charges must be dropped immediately. Thank you.